Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor, and I have nine thoughts I want to share with you. I'll get through them quickly, except for one in the middle is kind of long. But the first one is about why I avoided red meat for five months. Now, red meat is my favorite food, and I don't eat it every single day. But last year, when I had the black mold poisoning that settled in my chest and my heart, it was causing lactic acidosis because mold causes excess buildup of lactic acid, which is a waste that poisons the blood. And it also depletes B vitamins out of your body, and your stomach needs B vitamins to make hydrochloric acid. So when I ate red meat, my digestive system didn't do very well with it. My palpitations would get worse. And that, that happened twice um, in the uh, late winter of 2016. So I stopped red meat as I fixed my body up with supplements, and then I was able to get back on it. Now, this is true for other foods. So there are some people who are sick. you got to have a healthy body to digest food sometimes. So if you have a chronic fungus, yeast, um, bacteria, parasite, you have to avoid sugar, which may include fruit, and you want to avoid dairy products. But then as you get your body back to health, you can get back on these foods. So the point here is that um, even some natural foods should be temporarily stopped as you're trying to build up the health of your body. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is, um, I've mentioned this before, that the GAPS diet, which is designed to reverse autism in kids, it's accidentally ketogenic. I analyzed it a number of months ago and looked at the grams of fat, protein, and carbohydrates. And it's very healing. It's got very healing foods for the intestines, fatty meats and ripe fruit and sauerkraut fermented foods, but it's also ketogenic. So I just recently I thought of the Budwig diet, which was we're going back to the 1950s or earlier by a woman named Budwig, and she said cottage cheese and flaxseed oil together is uh, important for reversing cancer. And well, guess what? Cottage cheese and flaxseed oil combined, it's very ketogenic. Now, if you go back to that era, there wasn't much sugar. And if somebody had cancer and they lost their appetite, they're not eating much food. They're really close to ketosis because of the fasting aspect. You load them up with a bunch of fat, they go into ketosis, that reverses their cancer. Another uh, diet would be from Weston A. Price. So um, what he was famous, he was famous for a number of things, but one of the things he was famous for was he would show up at people's homes and they had a relative dying on the bed and he had um, cod liver oil and high vitamin butter, which means uh, cows were eating grass in June when the grass was very vibrant and growing fast. And the milk that they got from those cows turned into butter. It was kind of an orange color, not yellow. High vitamin butter is orange. He combined the cod liver oil and the butter together and he brought people back to life. So, and they were on their deathbed. So they had probably were fasting because he didn't have much of an appetite. And then they got loaded up with really, really healthy oils. Now you could say, well, the oils themselves have all these nutrients that could reverse cancer. That might be true. But uh, ketones from ketosis kills cancer. So I just want to say that three very important famous diets from the past, the GAPS diet, the Budwig diet, and the, and the uh, butter and cod liver oil from Weston Price, they're all ketogenic. Okay, the next one. We had a patient who 10 years ago had her gallbladder tested with a test called the HIDA scan, H-I-D-A. And um, it's a radioactive tracer that goes through the liver and through the gallbladder, and they can actually measure how well the gallbladder dumps bile into the small intestine. Her score 10 years ago was 20%. So she's been working on her liver and her gallbladder, and uh, her score recently was, um, I got it right here, 97% which is fantastic. And the doctor was very happy about it. And he said the average is 38%, which is horrible. The average American HIDA score is a flunk at 38%. Now, if you go back to the Atkins era in the 80s and 90s, people were eating more fat then, suddenly. And then they had a gallbladder attack and they rushed to the hospital, had their gallbladder taken out, And everybody blamed the Atkins diet. No, that's not the problem. The problem is 
decades of eating processed food, white sugar, white flour, slowing the bile release from the gallbladder, creating sludge, creating stones, and then eat a bunch of fat and the gallbladder has to squeeze bile into the small intestine. And it can't do it because it's been sick, sickened by the earlier diet. So I think this is a huge problem. Uh, there are some people who go into ketosis and their cholesterol goes up. There's, there's now three, uh, two reasons that I could certainly say why. But one of the reasons is because of gallbladder dysfunction. So if our average gallbladder score on the HIDAS test in this country is 38, this is for people who are sick. These are people in the hospital. Um, then that's a really bad indicator of the health of our gallbladder and liver. Okay, but that's the population of that is people who are pretty sick. Okay, the next one is on sleep drugs, the hypnotics. And um, I start, I, these are horrible drugs. And I had a few thoughts to say about it, and I decided to research it a little bit. And you can easily, easily just research um, sleep drug, drug hypnotics. And every single compilation of research, it's bad. And I read through one of them. I'll put a link below. But uh, these are the notes I got from this. So the deaths associated from these drugs, like Lunesta or Ambien, are just as high as cigarettes. 300 to 400,000 people a year um, are, die with an association of hypnotics. And they call it a quiet death because it happens at night. And the people who are on these drugs may have already have cardiovascular disease or some other disease. And when they are at the morgue, there's no autopsy, there's no determination of death because their age is advanced. Well, it could be the uh, sleep uh, hypnotics. Okay, so there is one particular compilation of uh, studies, and I'm saying Geisinger Health System data. So uh, pentobarbital was a preferred sleep drug hypnotic for many decades. And um, it's the same drug used for the death penalty, the death sentence. So they just use lower doses. Okay, but they're not, not using that anymore. Um, but the newer modern drugs, according to the epi epidemiological data, are not any safer. Um, so they increase cancer, depression, lethal infections, murder, crashes, falls, accidents, and there's no safe dose known. Withdraw from them causes insomnia, go figure, anxiety, panic, epilepsy. When I see, whenever I see anxiety or panic, that's absolutely lactic acidosis. Okay, and if you have seen my earlier videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, so fail to increase the sleep. They, they fail to increase. They fail to increase the sleep significantly, even at high doses. Lastly, they fail to increase sleep, even at high doses. So they don't even work. So just avoid these. You're better off without them. So if you're on a sleeping pill, use Google and search to find out if your sleeping pill is a hypnotic or not. And if it is, you're better off without it. Now, you want to talk to your medical doctor about that because that person was the one who prescribed the drug to you. And just keep your doctor informed on all of your actions with your drugs. Okay, here's the fifth idea. If you feel something moving inside your body, assume it's a parasite. Always go with that assumption. So you want to kick it out with really strong anti-parasitic herbs. They exist on this planet. Mother Nature put these herbs here, and um, you want to get really good quality ones. If you need our help, let us know. You can email us. Okay, the next thing I want to say is that restless leg syndrome is lactic acidosis, and it's, I'm getting better results now with ketosis. So in the last year and a half, I've had three people get better with their restless legs at night because I've got them into ketosis. Now, I've had a, quite a number of uh, restless legs patients in the past with poor results because they didn't know about ketosis. Okay, the next thing I want to say is that um, according to Dr. Royal Lee, the father of holistic nutrition, he says that seizures and epilepsy are lactic acidosis. It's a decrease of oxygen uh, to the nervous system. Now, I had said earlier about the hypnotic drugs. When you withdraw from them, they can cause epilepsy and panic and anxiety. It makes total sense that these drugs 
ruin the liver, and then they start that cycle of propping the liver up when you take it, but when you stop it, the liver crashes, the body crashes. Okay, so of course now seizures and epilepsy are very well treated with ketosis. Anything that does well with ketosis is actually um, the disease, the condition, is lactic acidosis. The mechanism is lactic acidosis. Okay, two more thoughts. Number, uh, number eight, I've said before that ketosis could feed a fungus, and I've warned people, if you have a fungus, avoid ketosis. Since I've first said that, I've had maybe five or six people go into ketosis even though they had a fungus, even though their, their tongue was coated with white or they bloated easily with food, five or six people did really well and felt better with ketosis even though they had a fungus. So the bottom line is it's always, it always comes down to the individual. Everybody's different. But most people I see have trouble with ketosis when they have a fungus. Okay, last one. Um, one of my patients said that her trainer told her when you come to the gym, you come either carbo-loaded, like they used to in the 70s, or come to the gym in ketosis. Either way, you could have peak strength and uh, potentially good endurance. If you're carbo-loaded, you may have to keep sucking down some sugar if your um, training you know, goes beyond 45 minutes or maybe it approaches an hour and 15 minutes. When you're in ketosis, you have much better endurance. You don't have to rely on any sugar or food or fat because ketosis gives you this long-term endurance. But the point here is that when she told me this, what this trainer said, it makes a lot of sense, and I know he knows what he's talking about. So carbo-loading has value, um, but in the long run, especially when you're going for the bagels and the grains, it will tear up your joints. It'll cause inflammation. It'll reduce your athletic career, whereas ketosis reduces inflammation and um, preserves your tissues, gets rid of pathological tissue at the same time, and it strengthens your tissues. Okay, so, and of course, you want to go in and out of ketosis. I always have to say that. I'm calling it cycling ketosis. You don't go into ketosis and stay in there forever. You got to come out of it too. For most people, there's always exceptions. I have two people that are staying in ketosis all the time, but everybody else should be coming out probably. All right, so these are my thoughts. I just gather up these papers every day. I'm writing a thought down thinking, oh, that'd be so cool. I'm going to share that with everybody. Then I put it in my pocket, and then I just gather up all these papers, and uh, I compile them, and I just throw them at you. So if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And share and subscribe.